Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this week's top five. For those of you who don't know, the first half of this video is going to be the best queen builds of the week. The second half is going to be the best immersive builds. And right at the end, we're going to have honourable mentions for both of the categories. Right then, with all that being said, let's get into it. Right then, so in the number five spot for the queen category, we've got Dark One with, I don't even know actually, let me get the video back up, with the White Springs build. Very aptly named as well, considering, you know, it's on the bloody White Springs. Right, so first up, I love the shape of the bloody thing. It's uh, rather curvy, and who doesn't like a bit of curvature in the life? Mm-hmm, simply, simply lovely. It's also extremely clean. We have got the White Springs set involved in this. Um, we've got the glass walls, and overall, I think it looks really smart. Aye, nice looking build on the exterior. Let's have a look on the inside. Oh, now that is nice and bonny. You've done a really nice job at decorating this. Your kitchen is absolutely stunning. Very well decorated as well. I can see you've put a lot of time into, you know, actually tarting it up a little bit. Overall, that one, it's a solid build, this. Like I say, your kitchen, I love it. I like the shape of the build itself. And, oh, look at that little hot tub merged into the foundation there. Nice. Nice touch indeed. Thank you very much for entering this week. Congratulations on the number five spot. Coming in at number four, we have Rug Glitch Cowboy with... Again, I don't know the name. One sec. The Bottle Bobber. Forward slash immersive. Forward slash vehicle. Forward slash... But you get the drift. Right. Very unusual concept you've got here, Moonlight. But I do like it. It definitely stands out. Another fantastic location choice as well. I've seen a few people do builds here. Nothing quite like this one, though. Yeah, it's a little bit mad. It's a little bit out there. But it looks good. Definitely a novel idea. Um, yeah, it looks like a painting ass at build here as well. So, your structure, it's a little bit deceptive. If you don't look at it in detail and you just have a you know quick glance at it, you think it's quite simple. But Moonlight's done quite a few building tricks on this. Take, for example, the offset wall, the overhanging roof pieces. When you start to actually pay attention, there is quite a bit of building wizardry in this. And it looks cool as well. And I gotta say, that little ladder stair thing you've made out of the footstools top notch so on to the interior and it's typical moonlight cowboy very clean very functional but very well decorated too we've got some nice merges going on everything's very well placed it's been well thought out awesome buddy work cowboy ah you've knocked this one out at part pal thank you very much for entering this week congratulations on the number four spot numero tres we have k build 76 with <laughs> I'll do it right. Nukes View Lake House. K build, I'm not going to lie to you. You have outdone yourself on this. What a beautiful looking camp. I think in other weeks, this could have been in the number one position. Any hoose and any house though. I love what you've done with the Wavy Willard's stone walls. Again, another fantastic use for them. Guys, I'm loving the ingenuity in the building community at the moment. I'm seeing so many people using different items to actually build the main structure of the camps with. And I must say, them defensive walls, every time I've seen them, they've looked bloody on point. So, another cool feature I liked about this build, again, white moon lights, the roof pieces. They're just ever so slightly offset, so it has that overhang. But it looks fantastic, guys. Yes, they do look complicated, and they do take a little bit of extra time to actually implement, but they make a massive difference. Okay, 10 out of 10 on exterior on this. Taking a look at the interior now, and it is a very nice open plan build. It feels very light and, I don't know what the word is, breezy? I, I saw it on a design program once on telly. I don't know. It looks great, all right, is what I'm trying to say. Your decor, yeah, it's not too bad at all. Again, we've got some merges. Everything's been well placed. It looks like it should be there. Awesome work. I cannot fault it one bit. Cracking camp, this one. Coming in at number two, we have a new entrant to the competition. It's Blood Eagle 71 with this absolute masterpiece. There's no other way to describe it, is there? This camp is properly well done, guys. It is your typical looking modern home. It's what you'd expect if you was to think of a 
76 clean build, especially at the White Springs as well. I think at this point, it's pretty much obligatory that you um, you do your modern homes at White Springs, at least once anyway. Now then, the main thing that actually stood out to me about this camp was the little extra bits that Blood Eagle's thrown in. Like the angled walls, for example. This camp still would have looked good if Blood Eagle would have just placed down normal straight walls. But no, he's put a little bit of angulation in the situation. Trust me, there's more shapes here than an 80s disco. And I ain't mad about it. I love it. What a stunning exterior. Perfectly encapsulates the meaning of clean build. Now, let's take a look inside. Right, okay then. So it is well decorated. Maybe not as well decorated as some of the other camps we've seen thus far, but it looks decent. It's not a bad effort at all, Blood Eagle. Like I say, could do with a little bit more, in my opinion, but that exterior just makes up for... I'm not going to say a lack of decoration, but you know what I'm you know what I'm on about, don't you? Thank you very much for entering this week, and congratulations on the number two spot. Not a bad result for your first ever entry, my friend. Okay then, so now we come to the number one spot, and who do you think's got it this week? Well, I'm not going to keep you waiting for any longer. The winner of this week's queen category is Roadkill You with the Viking Longhouse. This thing is, this thing is impeccable, guys. Now, yes, I get it. Some of you may be thinking this looks more like an immersive camp. Vikings don't don't live in Appalachia, so so it's not immersive. Yeah. What it is, though, is a very well-built and a very time-consuming two-build camp. Let me tell you, this bad boy would have been no easy feat to put together. There's loads of little details everywhere. Take, for example, the boats that Roadkill has made. Our vault boy here standing on the deck of said boat, fishing. And he's actually got a power conduit merged into a fish's mouth. So it looks like a line's attached to it. it it's just mind-boggling little things like that that make a difference. Even the shields, yeah, Roadkill has made them all individually and placed them down. It's just amazing work. And like I say, the attention to detail it is phenomenal. So enough blowing smoke up Roadkill's ass on his decor. Let's take a look at the structure itself because that is equally as impressive. Look at the roof. Yet again, another perfect example of something being used for its not intended purpose. That looks great, that does. Roadkill, in all honesty, this exterior, the structure, the decor, everything about it is flawless. Like, literally flawless. I can't find anything wrong with it. And I'm good at picking stuff out, believe me. On to the interior. And there isn't actually much decor in here. But that is perfect for what Roadkill is trying to do. What you've got to remember is the guy's trying to build a Viking Longhouse. It's not going to be filled with modern technology or, I, I don't know, Grognak. In fact, no, Grognak would actually fit well in this build. Probably the first build that that monstrosity could be placed down in. But you get what I'm saying, don't you? The theme matches the build. And sometimes that's more important than filling them up to the brim with shit. Roadkill, absolutely sublime build. One of my favourite ones of the week. Thank you very much for entering this week. Congratulations on the number one spot in the queen category. Hats off to you, mate. And that wraps up the Squeaky Queen constructions, guys. Next up, we have the top five immersive builds. But like I say, remember, there is four honourable mentions at the end of the video. So stay tuned. Anyhow, let's crack on. In the number five spot for the immersive category, we have a new entrant to the competition. It's Forward NL. Does that stand for Netherlands? I'm not sure. Anyway, doesn't matter, does it? What we have here, Mon Petit Fours, is a wonderfully scrappy and war-friendly build. This looks like Wasteland. This looks like Fallout. I absolutely love it. The way I look at scrappy and war-friendly stuff is, could that have been done by a random guy with an hammer and a bag of nails, right? And this one 100% could have been. Now, I will admit, I'm not a fan of the pointy roofs. I do think that takes away from it a little bit. However, the overall presentation of the thing is amazing. I like the perimeter wall. I like the settlement -y kind of vibe from it. And your decoration, it's up there with the best of them, pal. Forward, thank you very much for entering this week. And congratulations on the number five spot in your first time entering competition. Good result, that, pal. Well done. 
coming in at number four, we have Fluff Nara with the... I've done it again. I've forgotten the bloody name again. You'd think I've been doing this for years, wouldn't you? The Harper's Ferry Barges Camp. <laughs> we'll, we'll get it right at some point, don't worry. Right, first things first, Fluff Nara. Jesus, that's a lot of Fs. I like the idea behind it. Awesome use of the bolt prefabs and how you've actually turned them into barges, towing the containers. That's really clever, that. And that crane you've built, top notch. I love it. Now, granted, there isn't actually many structures other than the cranes. Um, but I think the overall idea behind it and the way that it's turned out really did swing it for me. It is a properly cool looking camp and the deco that you've put down really adds to it as well. In short, you've nailed it fluff. I was getting Far Arbor vibes from this. I don't know why, but it's kind of like the wasteland is starting to rebuild itself. Trades coming in down the river. You've got the settlers at Foundation starting to rebuild. Like I said, I don't know, but that's the kind of vibes that I'm getting from it. Fluff, thank you very much for entering this week. Congratulations on the number four spot. In the number three spot, we have Terminus with the new Sanctuary Raiders camp. And again, this is the kind of style that makes you think, yeah, some moron with an hammer and a bag of nails could have thrown it together. So in my eyes, this was very similar to Forward's camp. I like the little compoundy feel it's got at the front. I love the scrappiness about it. It looks shit. It looks ramshackled. It is 100% wasteland. The prefabs are really cool touch as well. I like how you've plonked that in there and how well it matches in with the rest of the build. And that tower you've come up with um, that has the defensive posts around the top of it. Again, a really nice touch. Yeah, it's a cool exterior, this, mate. And I can see a little bit of building trickery as well. You've free placed down one of the covered bridge pieces. They always look awesome in scrappy builds. Mm-hmm. Simply, simply lovely. And I must say, your decor, that is really well done. In all honesty, though, it's nothing too extravagant. And there's not that much of it. However, for some mad reason, it just works, in the words of our Lord Todd God. Amen. Brilliant job with this one, Terminus. Thank you very much for entering this week. Congratulations on the number three spot. Coming in at number two, we have a really clever camp that's been built by Slog. And I didn't even know you could place a camp down here. So this is a first to me. This build right here, ladies and gentlemen, this build right here, this build right here is the Alien Investigation Science Lab. Now, I'm going to admit, I am not a massive fan of the exterior. It really isn't my cup of tea. Uh, the shape of it at the back, yeah, it's just not doing much for me. Now, I'm not saying it's a bad build, but I'm not really a fan of military-style stuff. Now, yes, I know it's not a military build, but it's that kind of style, if you know what I mean. The building set. Um, what did it for me on this camp, and which I think you guys are going to find really impressive, is the interior. So, let's just have a look at it. What Slog has done is incorporated the crash spaceship into the build. And I think that looks absolutely awesome. And I've never seen that done before. That is cool as penguin piss, that Slog. I mean, fair play to you, buddy. What a really clever idea. And it's come out properly well. I mean, the decor in here as well. It just matches in with the theme perfectly. Now, again, guys, this isn't my favourite exterior. It's not the most complicated camp that we've seen submitted this week. But it is one of the coolest. And that's why I've chose it. It's something a little bit different. Slog, fantastic work with this, pal. Like I said, this is a first for me. I've never seen a camp build here. And the way you've used the actual camp spot and incorporated it, it it's sublime, mate. Thank you very much for entering this week. Congratulations on the number two spot. That's off to your mate. And would you look at that, guys? We're at the number one spot already. And who do you think's got it this week? Well, I'm not going to keep you waiting for any longer. The winner of this week's immersive category goes to Milner with the littlest flower shop build. Now, I get it. This one, nah, it's not as scrappy as some of the other ones we've seen, yeah? But it's immersive in a different way. L let me explain it to you. 76 is set, what, 25 years after the bombs have fell? So some of the houses are going to be in good nick, especially in Appalachia. It was relatively untouched by the bombs. It wouldn't be out of the realms of imagination that some settlers could have repurposed old buildings. That is exactly what this one strikes me as. Milne's done a good job on mixing scrappiness with a little bit of, I don't know, clean, more repaired kind of aspects. 
So, the thing that I really liked about the exterior, other than that amazing looking chimney you've put together there, is actually the entrance way. You don't actually see many people building with the concrete uh, slopey boys, you know, the, the ramps, I think the correct word is. So it's actually nice to see one in action. It looks like that could have been a bit of a bugger to play. So imagine it wouldn't have just gone down without any arguments. Did you have to manipulate it a little bit? Let me know down in comments, Milne. I've literally never seen them that well placed. That's the only reason I ask. Anyhow, yeah, Milne, fantastic job on the exterior. Let's take a look on the inside. Mm-hmm. Yep, another mixture of ramshackled shit that probably smells a cat piss. Next to some nice, lovely smelling flowers that are probably not able to overpower said cat smell. Yeah. Milne, overall, I think your interior is very well decorated. You've always been good at that aspect of the building, and you can see here with this build. Top-notch work as ever, my friend. Thank you very much for entering this week. Congratulations on the number one spot. More than well deserved. And that, ladies and gentlemen, wraps up the top five. Let's take a look at this week's honourable mentions. We're going to start off with Courier 6, I think, and their overgrown container build. Now, this is Courier's first entry and they've come in like a buddy bow in a china shop again any other week this could potentially be in the top five it really is a solid camp this one and you know what guys it's actually relatively simple as well there is nothing too much to this camp but it looks awesome i love it them shipping containers still one of the best items in my opinion at least from the atomic shop really well put together build i love the decor that little cupboard you've made fantastic yeah courier like I say, any other week, this could have been in the top five, my friend. All right then, so for our second honourable mention, we have another new entrant to the competition. This is Bonnet with the escape room build. Guys, I don't feature many mini games or escape rooms on the channel because it's so hard to, you know, actually film them because of the nature of what they actually do. This one by Bonnie, though, I think she's just done a fantastic job at making it look good. It looks creepy, doesn't it? It's got a really sinister vibe about it and you know what if it's anything like some of the escape rooms i've seen in 76 it's probably ingenious as well honestly i was stuck in one of these buggers for two hours and i wouldn't give up which is probably a stupid idea considering i've lost most of my brain cells on 76 vicious circle anyhow bonnet fantastic camp escape room thing thank you very much for submitting all right so for our third honorable mention this thing is mind-boggling to be honest with you. It is Jerry Samuche, our steadfast man with the nuclear missile launch camp thing. Yeah. Straight up honesty with you, I don't like the actual camp itself. How it looks, I mean. There is a niche for these floating glass weird looking builds and I can appreciate the complexity behind it. However, just not my style or taste. What I did find impressive, though, is how you have managed to line it up so perfectly that a nuclear missile launch will go straight through the bloody middle of it. That is some Archimedes level of measuring and engineering. And the fact that it's so high up in the air as well, which does pose its own separate building challenges, just adds to the overall awesomeness of this build. Make no mistake, guys, this is a difficult one. Jerry Samuche, steadfast man incredible work really really impressive i just didn't like the look of the camp i'm sorry but i'd rather be honest with you right so for our fourth and final honorable mention we have yet again another new entrant to the competition this time it's austin black with this beautiful looking creation in all honesty mate i'm not sure what it's supposed to be is it some kind of pavilion some kind of pagoda it, either way it doesn't matter it looks gorgeous and that pathway you've made Oh my god, Ashante or whatever the fucking word is. This is easily one of those camps that could have been in the top five, but the queen category this week was difficult. Um, but yeah, fantastic first entry, my friend. Solid camp. I look forward to seeing more from you. In fact, I look forward to seeing more from all of the honourable mentions. You all did a fantastic job and congratulations. It was not an easy week, let me tell you. So please don't be too disheartened. And yeah, guys, that wraps it up for me. Thank you very much to everybody who entered this week. And of course, a massive thank you to all my channel members and Patreons. If any of you watching want to try your hand at the top five, there's a link to my Discord in description. 
Anyhow, as we say in the north, I will love you and leave you, and I'll catch you in the next one. Have fun, everybody. Much love.